Yeah, oh. right, of course, yeah. Um, borderline personality disorder is a, a disorder where people just have sort of a chronic uh, lack of a sense of self where they just feel sort of empty inside. They feel like their mood uh, fluctuates a lot. They might um, dissociate sometimes where they think things aren't quite real. I, the, the thing I dislike about the label is sometimes when people hear personality disorder, they think people want to be that way. And I can tell you from working with people who have this disorder over the years, it's the last thing they want to present with. Um, so d don't fall into that trap of like, um, you know, like thinking people, oh, that's their personality, that's how they want to be. That, that's not the, the way it is. It's, they can't help it. They, they don't, they want to not be up and down. They don't want to feel depressed. They don't want to feel suicidal which are kind of all the things that go with borderline. There's treatments that are more specific for borderline personality disorder. Um, dialectical behavioral therapy or DBT therapy is a, it, it's sort of similar in some ways to cognitive behavioral therapy, but it's a, a mindfulness-based therapy where you're like um, more in terms of like monitoring how you're feeling and things like that. Sometimes medications can be helpful, but I really think as a frontline treatment, the DBT therapy is probably the more important for borderline personality disorder. And, and I think what we're finding is there's a, a relation to what we call like a, a subthreshold bipolar disorder with people who experience that. Yeah. Uh, what about eye movement therapy for anxiety? Mm, right, eye movement desensitization therapy is uh, accepted treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, there's not a lot of people that do it. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know Ottawa County as well. I've worked um, uh, t to Benzie County to the north over to some of the other counties and down to Muskegon. I, I'm not sure if there's people doing EMDR in Ottawa County or not, but it is, uh, you know, it's proven by studies to be helpful for people with post-traumatic stress disorder. And it's, it's a viable, good option. Uh -huh. Right. Tired, yeah. You know, but I, it, I'm literally afraid to go to sleep because, right. you know, I'm trying to balance out the events that happened in my life and, right. you know, put them where they're supposed to be and, and, and heal and maintain. Yeah. And sleep is a huge part yeah. of that. <laughs> like, it's the know? hardest thing. I, I, I find it, especially with people with severe nightmares. Um, there's a few more pharmacological options, like Mini Press is one they're doing research on. It's a blood pressure medication, although not a very good one, <laughs> but it can help with nightmares, um, things like that. Um, you know, there's, so there's some things that are they're starting to uh, get a little more exposure and a little more research behind. Um, sleep disorders in general, I think there's more and more research in terms of how they affect our functioning, both physically and, and mentally. Um, and for me, I, I don't separate like physical health from mental health. I look at them as part of the same picture, really, to be honest, because so many things with, you know, our mental health affect our physical health. If people are stressed or things like that, I mean, they're not going to be healthy physically. They're going to probably develop um, high blood pressure, diabetes. They're not going to want to exercise, all of those things. So, um, yeah, so I, I would, you know, work with uh, your providers a little bit in terms of maybe there's, um, you know, medication or therapy that could be directed a little bit more towards the nightmares. But yeah, I, f I feel bad. I mean, they're really hard to treat and I wish we had better things, to be honest, but you know, it's, we don't at this point. So, um, yeah. Uh -huh. um, my son had terrible problems with his stomach. 
There's a huge amount of uh, nerve connections between the um, gut and the brain. Yeah. And um, it's very common for people with anxiety disorder to have GI distress. Um, right. They have their role. I mean, sometimes it's just about getting some functioning back. Um, I mean, it, right. Yeah. I, I think long term, it's probably not the best thing. But short term, I mean, sometimes you just have to get through the day. And if, if things are just so horrible, um, you know, if it helps, I mean, there's something to be said. Um, one of the things about marijuana, too, that I should mention is there's something called cyclical vomiting syndrome that's associated with it. And I can't tell you the number of people in, that are heavy users of marijuana. And I'm not up here to like say it's the worst thing in the world. I mean, it's probably in terms of alcohol versus marijuana. I mean, you can make your argument. I mean, it's, I, I think anything. Well, that's another question. What do you think about edibles? Would that be less, less harmful? Yeah, I, I, it could. I mean, I don't know a, a ton about it, other than for like the lung function, I'm sure probably it's a little bit. Yeah, I don't. I, I think um, the way they change the rules, you have to have like an established uh, uh, provider relationship with the person that writes it. I, I don't know as much about it because I just don't do it where I'm at. And um, you know, I'm not saying it's not right for some people. It could be, but I'm just saying you want to be a little bit cautious. I mean, if you have to use it to function, um, you know, yeah, I don't know how like healthy that is long term for someone. Um, so, I mean, you just want to be cautious with it, like any other drug, really. Um, yeah. So, um, any other questions? Okay. Could you talk a little, little bit more about <coughs> sleep? Um, you know, do you have any suggestions of maybe trouble falling asleep or the right. five wake up and yeah. sleep? And right, yeah. And the, I know that how that impacts everything else. Right. Too. Yeah, there was a huge study that came out, I think, within the last year regarding. Um, treatment for sleep, and, and what they found is that um, therapy was more effective than medication in terms of uh, being able to initiate sleep and maintain sleep. Um, so what you want to do is uh, you want to have the TV off, distractions at a minimum. You don't want to try to fall asleep in the same place you work, although a lot of people at work fall asleep. <laughs> so um, you know, it, it's, it's just some of these things. And I could get um, maybe, there's, there's a really good review article, and I could maybe get it to Barbara at some point. Um, I can't remember everything it said. But what I could tell you is that sleep is, I, I mean, I think it's one of the most important things in terms of you know, people functioning in a, a healthy, consistent manner. If, if they're not sleeping, it's super hard to do. Yeah. Melatonin can be a good. Melatonin can be really good. Um, there's some B vitamins that are helpful for anxiety, like uh, inostazol um, is in the, the B vitamin category. Um, there's studies that are actually really good studies in terms of showing it's helpful. Um, so there are some more natural um, type therapies, things like that. It, yeah, I'll misspell it probably. It's, it's I-N-O-S-O-T-O-L, um, I think, although there might be an I okay. after the S. Um, but if you walked across the street to Health Hut, I'm sure they could t <laughs> tell you what it was. So, yeah. yeah. Is that for anxiety? It, it can be helpful for some people, yeah. Is that still a vitamin? Yeah, it is a vitamin, yeah. It's a, it's a B vitamin, I believe. Yeah, melatonin is, uh, you know, I've had people use it for years. It's, it's pretty safe, pretty effective. Um, they're finding it's a treatment for other disorders. I've had people use it for migraines now at higher dosages, things like that. So um, you really don't see like a huge amount of negative effects. Some people kind of grow immune to it over the years. So it might be worthwhile to take like a break every so often from it um, and just, you know, not use it consistently every single night. Um, 
It can be, yeah. I mean, all anxiety disorders can be hereditary in, in some sense because there's genes that will like put you more at risk for those types of disorders. Um, what are the treatments for HLA? Um, there can be certain, there's a, a variant of cognitive behavioral therapy called exposure therapy where you would have like a graded gradual exposure to more and more anxiety provoking situations. Um, so you, you might start out like thinking about it, right? And then you go from thinking about it, maybe you would watch someone else like give a speech or maybe you would run up and you know, get in front of everyone and then run back or you know, the, it, it's just sort of those principles and, and they're really effective. I mean, actually what you'd see on like, uh, you know, uh, MRI scans is that the, the changes that occur with medication could be mimicked by the therapy for things like social anxiety or specific phobias. Mm -hmm. Did you tell us that like, when you know somebody has got some kind of a disorder that you should say something to them? I lived, I had a girl that lived at my house for a while and she was constantly putting her hands in water. Mm -hmm. that was Well, yeah, I think, um, you know, you could. I mean, I, I don't think there's anything wrong with it, but just be sensitive in, in terms of sometimes you might experience anger or agitation <laughs> directed back at you. Um, yeah, um, you know, a lot of times people go out of their way to, like, try to hide these types of things. Um, but if you have a, a, a trusting relationship with someone else, Oftentimes they'll give you clues, they'll, they'll talk about maybe not the exact thing that they're experiencing, but they might just talk peripherally about it. And, um, and, and you can sort of use those to make inroads and to try to you know, be more supportive for people.